Now, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is does somebody like you, okay? I think when it comes to sales, the most important thing is the ability to make somebody like you. That's first and foremost. I go to a liquor store by my house and I buy my groceries from there. Do you think this liquor store is cheaper than Costco's? It's not. With inflation, I'm probably spending an extra five, six hundred dollars a month now, if you do the math and the difference. And then if you take my wife's coupons and stuff that I'm not using, like, there's a lot of other stuff that you could save. But why do I go to this liquor store? It's because I appreciate the experience. I like the guy behind the counter. Me and him have good conversation. I know his family. He shows me pictures of his pets. He's a very nice guy. He always has recommendations for me for cigars. And I continue to go to the store because I like this guy. And if you think about it, if it was only about the price, I would just go to Costco's and I'd say, no, this guy's too expensive. But I don't look at his prices because I appreciate the experience there. So whatever you're doing and your customers and your clients, do they like you and do they appreciate your experience? I know some of you guys do lead buys. Some of you do referrals. I'll share with you a quick lead by story. When I had a team of about 20 bankers, we were having trouble pulling credit. Spending all this money on leads, we couldn't pull credit on them. The conversion was about like 28%, right? We wanted to get it to 50, 60%. So what did I do one day? I huddled them up and I said, look, right now we're auditing that you have to say this and you have to say that in the call and it's not working. Let's cancel that audit completely and let's do a blind date audit. And if you know anything about a blind date, I don't know if a blind date's still around. I've never been on one, but you know, I've watched movies and things. But I know in a blind date, <laughs> I know in a blind date you want to usually look good. You know, that's number one. You want to feel good. You want to smell good. You want to have some jokes lined up. You want to have some stories lined up. You want to be curious about the other person so it's an interesting date that you could establish more from. And I told my team, if you look at, this, at the data, the majority of blind dates turn into one night stands. You know, there are a few people that go a long way with it, God bless them. But the majority turn into one night stands, don't last very long. And I said, if you look at your phone call, what do you get out of your phone call? You get closer to your goals, you get more commission, right? You accomplish your dreams. So I simply told them, why don't we treat our calls like blind dates? Why are the calls dry? Why are they boring? Why do you think somebody's gonna give you their social security number and pay $10,000 in closing costs and you don't know anything about them and you didn't even make them like you? So I said, let's simply focus on a blind date. How many times could you make somebody laugh? How many stories could you share? How many times do you show confidence? And we started rating those things. And we started having fun with it. You know, you have a fun date, you have a boring date. And we started doing those kind of audits. And you know what happened? We started pulling credit at 60 and 70%. Simply because people were having a good time on the phones and they were being themselves. So that's when I learned, okay, the light bulb lit. It is really about just having some fun and making people like you and showing your personality. So this blind date thing turned into like a, a, a national training that I do for companies called the blind date to audit their calls. That's number one. Number two is creating the need. You know, you could say, all right, I made somebody like me, they still don't do business with me. It's probably not enough. You can't do a couple jokes and then have somebody sign on the dotted line. You need a little more than that. So how do you create the need for somebody? Well, if I did landscape, which I never do landscape, and I'm trying to sell you my landscape service, I would ask you things like, how often do you want your landscape cut? And what are you happy with about the service you're getting right now? And what are you unhappy with about the service you're getting right now? And what does your dream landscape look like? And why is that dream landscape important to you? And after I gather all this data, what do I do with it? I put together a perfect presentation of why you should choose me for your landscape. But without those questions and those answers, I don't know how to create the need for you. So I ask, how are you creating the need with your clients? Number three. I think about sharing stories and getting stories. A lot of times in sales, most of the stories I'm getting from people is not about the sales, it's about all the other things that are important to somebody. For example, I have a pool in my backyard that I just built. I spent a lot of money on this pool, okay? And it's finally built and I love it and it looks good. And the first day I find one frog in there, 
with no big deal, it's a frog, scoop it out, throw it back in the pond. The next day I find four frogs in there. I'm like, all right, this is turning into a thing. Let's take these things out, throw it out. The next day after that, I find hundreds of little baby frogs. This small, I'm like, damn, I didn't even know frogs could be that small and live and swim around the pool. And I go to Google and I'm like, baby frogs, and it says frogs hatch thousands of babies at once. So now these guys are coming to my pool and hatching thousands of eggs and leaving. I'm OCD, I'm disgusted, my son is too. I didn't even want to get in the pool anymore. I don't know what these frogs carry. It's a big problem. I just spent all this money on this pool and now I got the uh, planet of the frogs against me. And they're all trying to, you know, live in my pool. So the reason I say that to you is because if Mike Fawaz or Matt calls me and let's say I'm working with a competition and they talk to me for an hour, then somehow my pool gets brought up and then Mike Fawaz tells me, hey, you know, uh, I got actually a chemical that keeps the frogs out and I got a guy in your area that could help you with it. I'm actually gonna send you his number. And he sends me his number, and then when he sends me an email to go over all the benefits of working with TPO, he also puts a link for the chemical and puts a picture of his pool. I'm probably gonna do business with Mike Fawaz, not because of the TPO and the servicing and the pricing and the technology, but because he helped me with the pool, which was the most important problem to me. I didn't care about anything else but that pool. And that sale will be built on my pool, not built on the service that you provide. So I say that to you because what, what is your client's pool that you're talking to? And are you discovering what that pool is to them? And then are you providing value to what's important to them? Number four, I think about open doors. You open one door, it leads to another door, it leads to another door, it leads to another door. Great salespeople, great business people, open up all doors, they're extremely curious. Average salespeople, they only clean the surface. You know, they clean what shows, they don't open up the closet, they don't clean under the bed, they got spider webs down there. They only want to do what shows. And if you want to build great relationships, you got to open up a lot of doors. If you're having dinner with a realtor and his wife calls or her husband calls and they say like, hey, the dog sitter canceled, you need to find a new dog sitter. And then you keep eating your spaghetti and you don't ask any questions, like you're not opening doors, right? You'd say, what kind of dog do you have? And I know a dog sitter in your area that could probably help. And you try to provide value. Then you talk about your dog and you show them pictures. And then that conversation can lead to the kids. Then it could lead to the vacations. Then it could lead to traveling. Then it could lead to finances. And then you're building a whole relationship off one open door. So what are those open doors in your conversations? Are you opening them or do you hear a baby crying in the background and you completely ignore it? You know, imagine having a conversation. Wah. You're like, so how much do you make a year? Like there's a baby screaming in the background, you know? Is that your baby? Why are they crying? I have a baby, here's what I do. How many do you have? You plan to have more? Like that's a whole nother open door as well. Number five, I think about going three layers deep. If you ask one question, you typically don't get the real answer, right? But if you ask it three different ways, three different times, the truth usually comes out. So like I had, you know, brokers that asked the realtors, they're trying to get the realtor's business, what's the most important thing to you? And let's say the realtor says, the most important thing to me is having a broker that's available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And they say, great, I'm gonna be available seven days a week, 24 hours a day for you. And then they tell me, you know, I figured out what's the most important thing to my realtor is, is being available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I tell them that's not enough. What do you mean that's not enough? That's not the real answer. You gotta go three layers deep into that answer. Why is it important to you to have somebody available seven days a week, 24 hours a day? And then the realtor might say, well, I had a deal fall out on a Sunday. And then you ask, well, how did that deal fall out on a Sunday? Well, I called the broker, he never answered, they had to get it done, it was a time sensitive matter and they went somewhere else. Okay, so the most important thing to you is having somebody available so that way you never lose a deal again. Because losing that deal obviously hurts you, right? Yes. Okay, I'll make sure that you never lose a deal again and I'll be available on Sunday. And then I take it a step further. Every Sunday morning when I'm eating my Fruit Loops, I call that realtor, hey, happy Sunday. Just giving you a call and letting you know I'm here if you need anything. And the next Sunday I email him, hey, check out this listing. If any of your clients are interested, let me know. And the next Sunday I hit him up, hey, I'm going to open house. 
And then I start being present to him every single Sunday based off what he told me. Now, after seven, eight weeks, what's going to happen with that realtor? When he thinks about Sunday and he thinks about someone that's available, he thinks about me. Because I primed his mind to let him know that I'm here on Sunday for you. Instead of just asking one time and saying, perfect, I'll be there. And then lastly, talking about everything other than the sale. 90% of my sales were based off talking about everything other than the sale. So if you listen to your people's phone calls in your shop, or your own phone calls, is it 90% other than the sale? Or does it sound like a robotic call just qualifying? Because when it comes to building the competitive advantage, the relationship is the competitive advantage in sales.